Welcome back to our Motivation and Mindset Monday, the best way to start your week off, right? Every single Monday, we join together for about a 20-minute episode in order to get our minds right. We know by now that we have many goals that we want to achieve in our life, but the only thing, and I'll tell you that right now, this is a big part of today's show, a lot of times the only thing holding us back is us. And so what I want to share with you right now on today's show is the top rated goal achievement success tip. And I share that and I say that in this way because there are so many different tips and tricks you can learn. Meaning like you might meet a mentor and they may give you the top 10 things that you need to do in order to improve a relationship, enhance spirituality, lose the weight, transform your body, transform your health, uh, any different tip, right? Like get a better career, get promoted. They might give you the 10 things that you need to do. And you know what? And I would say if they've already been there and they've already done that and they've helped other people, then you should probably follow those 10 tips. There's no doubt about it. And there's also no shortage of people and experts out there to give you those tips. Some of it free. The free tips are good, right? It's a good starting place. But then at some point, you'll probably want to customize that for yourself. You want to get deeper at least. What I want to share with you today, though, is regardless of the tips that you find in order to, again, enhance the career, the spirituality, the body, the health, the relationships, what we need to realize is that it doesn't take that learn to learn those 10 tips or learn those specific things. Maybe it takes you four weeks or 12 weeks or maybe a year, right? Maybe you give yourself a year of really that amount of study that you need in order to achieve any goal. I'll tell you right now, if you spend a year trying to achieve one goal, 50 pounds of weight loss, finding that right person for you, enhancing your spirituality, kind of finding yourself and your place in the world, um, trying to transform your overall health, even if it's autoimmune related or anything, like you should be able to do that. Uh, Your relationship, like any one of those things, you should be able to do it. One year, there's very few goals that you can't accomplish in one year. Now, you can't get a four degree, a four year degree uh, in one year, right? You, so you can't do some of those things, but you can be well on your way. You can know what you need to do inside of a year. So once you, what I'm trying to say is this, a lot of times we know what we need to do, okay? You probably know what you need to do in order to achieve some of your 2021 goals right now, all right? And if you listen to this in 2025, you know what you need to do in order to achieve your 2025 goals, okay? So what is the issue? The biggest issue, and that's why I'm calling it the top rated goal achievement success tip. The reason why I'm calling it that is that the information that you need, the blueprint, the formula is is easy enough to find. You'll be able to find it, okay? But the biggest thing that you need to worry about after you get that information is you. Too often, we are the issue. We are the one holding us back from achieving our goal. Such a big part of success I've found in private practice and private health practice has been really just getting out of your own way. So let me give you a couple examples. Again, in a, in a private functional medicine integrative health practice, which is what I have, I realize that the most successful people aren't smarter. They don't necessarily have more money. They don't, they don't have anything more. But what they're willing to do is simply get out of their own way to plug themselves into a system that has already worked for many thousands of other people. So like, let's say you wanted to improve your career and well, let's just say that you wanted to uh, build out a podcast, right? So you want to, you want to create a podcast. You want to become uh, well-known in podcasting, whatever it might be. Well, you could hire someone or take a course and learn everything that you need to know about podcasting and promotion of it and anything like that. Okay. So you know what to do why haven't you started? Or you wanted to write a book. You can learn how to do that really, really quickly. So why haven't you started? The issue typically comes back to us, myself included. There's just no doubt about that. And again, as I bring it back to those wellness clients, the ones who simply said, okay, I'm going to suspend disbelief and I'm going to plug myself into this blueprint. My coach, my doctor, my IHP, my mentor, whoever it was, they gave me a system that they believe will work for me because it's worked for other people like me. And because I don't have a better plan, I'm not going to question it. I'm going to plug myself into it because I went to them or the certification, the online course, whatever it might be, because I needed that knowledge. 
And here's the thing. It doesn't mean you can't question things in life. I'm, I'm far be it for me to ever say that. But you won't know the right questions until you begin to work the plan and to work the blueprints. And too often, we don't even get started because we question the blueprint, we question the formula, we question the doctor, we question the health practitioner, we question the guru, the expert, whatever it is, yet we are not that expert in that field. And I've done this myself, again, like with everything. And I am someone that asks a lot of questions, right? So my team especially, my team over at Equal Life knows, like I'm always questioning them, not in a bad way but I want to learn. So if you are questioning in order to learn, great. If you're questioning more to the fact that like, ah, this, is, this isn't gonna work for me, or I've already tried something like that in the past, I've done something similar, not the exact same thing, but you've done something similar, you can always come up with what are called excuses. Those are not you saying you have valid reason not to get started. And again, this is a little bit of tough love in this episode today, because I'm giving myself that same tough love. But what you're really making are excuses. You are holding you back from moving forward. Because let's just say that you began to work that weight loss plan and you had that 50 pounds to lose or the health plan or the relationship plan or the spirituality plan or the career plan, any one of those things, right? The finance plan, whatever it might be for your 2021 goals or 2025. All right, whatever it is, I want you to understand is that it is better for you to get started on that plan, to plug yourself in, knowing that it might not be perfect, okay? It might not be perfect. Most likely, it's not going to be. Because in a way, you are unique, right? You have your own unique attributes. You have your own unique life. But this is a blueprint. This is a formula. These are keys to success. So your job is not necessarily to question them. It's more to make tweaks along the way. You know that in order to successfully get a career in X, you typically need to do this, this, and this, A, B, and C, right? In order to lose weight and keep it off, not just lose weight in the short term, but to keep it off, you need to, well, what do you need to do? You need to begin to rebalance the body in terms of hormones, in terms of blood sugar, in terms of inflammation, in terms of sleep. It goes way beyond calories in, calories out. So if you're following a plan that's simply calories in, calories out, good luck. It's going to be frustrating. But again, if you've done your due diligence and you found, oh, this is what it really takes in order to lose the weight and keep it off, okay, you're going to begin to work that plan. And then you'll realize, oh, this little thing doesn't work for me. I don't digest nuts very well and seeds very well. Okay, good. Then we just remove those. The plan still works. You just don't eat nuts and seeds. You stick with every other food that you can eat, right? So you don't look at what doesn't work. That's not going to work for you. Like people look at a plan and be like, oh, I can't do this. It contains nuts and seeds. Well, here's the thing. That doesn't make the plan work. That's just one food group that you could choose to eat from or not, right? But you follow all the other principles. So what I'm saying is this, is that most of success, honestly, most of success is just getting out of your own way. But how do you get out of your own way? Well, you have to take your mind out of the equation. Because your mind is content enough staying where you are right now. I want to repeat that. Your mind is content enough to stay where you are right now. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's not true. I'm not happy right now. I don't, I'm not where I want to be. And I agree with you. But your mind and your nervous system, which is your subconscious, knows what it's in for. It knows how to deal with your current life. It may not be happy, but it knows. Now you're asking it to move outside of its comfort zone circle, right? So what does it have to do? It has to take a chance. And remember, your nervous system doesn't want you to take a chance. It's going to make you all sorts of apprehensive and anxious and overwhelmed, and you're just going to, you're going to feel totally overwhelmed. So you make up excuses. Again, like that's your nervous system helping you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't going to work for you. Yeah, sure, it worked for other people, but you're different, right? So you just never do it. And that is keeping you in that comfort zone. Again, it's uncomfortable because you're not happy there, but your nervous system and your mind say, we can deal with this. We know about this, this, and this. We're not happy with it, but we get it. We can handle it. So the issue is you need to be able to overcome that. So the best thing you can do is just, you honestly, you almost don't even think about it. You get those 10 steps, whatever it might be from your coach or your mentor, your certification, whatever it is, and you just simply work the process. You take as much of the conscious mind and that thinking mind, that analytical mind out of the equation. You try to just calm that limbic nervous system, which is saying, danger, 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 don't do that. It's new, right? It's new. It's scary. But the problem is to get to the next level, well, you need to venture into uncharted territory. And if you don't venture into that uncharted territory, well, then what happens is you don't progress towards your goal. 
So I always say you have to suspend disbelief. And the best way to work the process is to create a process. So you need to actually schedule it. A lot of people say, I don't like to create a schedule. It's too, it's too confining for me. I don't want that. As, as Jordan Peterson says, a lot of people think of a schedule as, as a prison for themselves. It's not. Your schedule creates freedom in your life. And here's why. You, there's so many things that you want to do in a given day or week or month. Well, a lot of times you never get to do them. It's not that you don't have the time. You have the time. You need to prioritize those times. I'm willing to bet if you look in your phone, you spend about an hour on social media. You might spend an hour watching TV. You might spend an hour just doing nothing. Like you, again, like there are time in the day. Like there's times in the day that we can't do it. And a lot of times we begin to overestimate in the short term how much time we actually need, right? How much time do you really need? No, not a whole lot of time to do that workout. 30 minutes, that's about it, right? You can get 30 minutes in your day, trust me. So, and then you, you might say, well, you know, what is it going to take to get well? Well, getting well is not a massive process. It's removing the toxicities and adding back in your deficiencies. So it's more tweaks in that plan than anything else. And then, of course, you're trying to do less of the things that add toxicity to your body and more of the things that build you back up. Like on tomorrow's show, I'll be talking about what not to eat, right? I'll be talking about like, or, or it might be Wednesday's show, but basically the, the one diet factor that everybody can agree on that increases cardiovascular disease and cancer. Don't do this one thing. That's what we're going to be talking about. So let's not do that one thing, but the truth is like we all need to eat. So just don't eat those foods and eat these ones instead. So it's not even a huge time commitment. But remember, our minds like us to believe we don't have the time, we don't have the energy, we don't have the resources, anything that's just getting in your way. But you need to put it in your schedule and you need to make those notes of what you have to do. And I'll tell you this, it works so much better when it's done on a daily basis or near daily basis. I'm even looking into a new exercise routine, not looking into it, I'm beginning a new exercise routine right now that has me working out every day but Sunday, every day but Sunday. Because I want to just say this time of the day, every day is for exercise. That's it. This time of the day, every day is for exercise. The only day that will that will be a little bit more of a challenge is on Saturdays. But I'm just going to have my daughters work out with me. Like we're just going to do a workout together. That's it. We're going to keep it simple. Now, why can I say that I'm able to do this every day? Because I'm going to keep the workouts under 30 minutes. They're basically going to be 20 minute workouts. So I'm just going to carve out 30 minutes for the day. And I'm going to do it every day so my body knows that that's when it's coming. Now, is every day going to be a hard workout? It's not. That's the truth. It's not. I'm going to go two days of like real workouts, one day of recovery workout, which is going to be cardio. Two days of real workouts, one day of cardio. I'll talk more about that, that program in the future. But... Uh, you know, I'm working, I'm working on, I'm working on implementing specific research that I've been doing a lot of in-depth work on. And it's like, yeah, let me get these shorter workouts, but they have to count, but you want them short. So the goal is I only need 30 minutes a day. Now, again, I run three fairly large health-based companies. I still talk with people on a daily basis about health issues. I read hundreds of labs. I mean, like I have a pretty busy schedule. And then of course I have two daughters, uh, my wife, I've got a, a crazy French bulldog. And so like I, my time is limited as well. So what I need to do is just carve out that time because I'm making it a priority. But my mind says to me, you don't have that time every day. You don't have that time every day. Where are you going to find it on Wednesdays? Wednesdays is your day that you're recording all day. You're doing this, this, and the other thing. You're going to sweat. You're not going to be able to sell. It's like my mind's trying to talk me out of it. So what I need to do, though, is simply schedule it. And then once you schedule it, here's what you can't do. Talk yourself out of it. You just work your schedule. That is why when people see my schedule, I show it inside of IHP, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, and I show them my schedule. And it's scheduled basically all day. It's all day. Even the downtime is scheduled. My workouts are scheduled. My lunch is scheduled. People say it's way too scheduled. I get it from the outside looking in. But I want to be able to do a lot of things in my day and accomplish a lot. So by having this schedule, I just say, oh, the little alarm went off. Time to switch to this. Time to move to this. And the nice thing is I don't put a lot of thought into it. I work the schedule. It's actually not a lot of willpower if you just work the schedule. A lot of people try to will themselves to do things. No, this is what it says for me to do in my calendar. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to move into this next thing. People try to schedule meetings with me during a Facebook Q&A that I do, during a podcast recording. Sorry, I can't do the interview. I can't do the phone call, whether it's for my team or not. I already have something scheduled during that time. 
And during our meeting time, I'm not going to schedule anything during our meeting time. So everything is scheduled, but it allows me a sense of freedom because now I have to wonder, what am I doing with my day? But also, I work the plan. And if you listen just last week, really, to that 12-week plan, I simply say to myself, this is what I want to accomplish, where I'll feel like productive, I'll feel like I've grown, and it'll make me happy to achieve these things. And then I just put it into the different months, right? So I have three months inside of a 12-week year. If you don't know about that, definitely check out that show. And then here's what has to happen in the month. Then if this is what has to happen in the month, well, this is what has to happen every week, and this is then what happens on a daily basis. And if you do that, those small little half-hour chunks in order for you to move forward, well, no big deal that one day. Is any one workout going to get me to my goal? No, not at all. Like one workout, doesn't matter if you do it, doesn't matter if you miss it. But if you had 20 workouts scheduled for the month, what's that, five a week times four weeks? Well, if you miss half of those, now you're down to 10. That makes a big difference, right? If you miss a whole week, it makes a big difference in terms of your results. Not so much if you've been doing it for a year or two, but definitely more up front, right? That's what I want people to know is like, once you get that momentum going, it gets it's actually much easier. For me, my schedule is essentially memorized because I've been doing it. It's been imprinted. It's now almost instinct in order to be do it in order to do it. So what I want to share with you is that big part about the scheduling. And the last part is this, is that too often we want the better relate. Let's just talk about better relationships. So we want a better relationship, right? We say that that's a goal of mine. Like, Oh, I want a better relationship. I'm again, not, not, not say for me particular, but I hear it a lot in my particular practice. I want a better relationship. I want this. I want that. You have to understand is you can want all you want. But if it is not you who initiates the weight loss, the health, the career, the finances, or in this case, we're talking about relationships. If you are not the initiator, if you are the, not the one that goes after it, it's not likely it's going to happen. Because now it's up to, up to happenstance and chance, right? Like, oh, well, maybe it happens, right? Maybe uh, I bump into that person. Or maybe my spouse just becomes nicer to me, like whatever it might be, right? But it has to be you, even if you don't believe you are at fault. Let's say you're in a current relationship. It has to be on you in order to try to improve in every way that you can. Okay, because you are half of that equation and you hope that what you put out into the world then comes back to you. And here's the issue. It's typically not going to happen right away. You need to be able to putting this in on a daily basis. Not a lot, just a little bit, right? In a relationship, using those words that are a little bit kinder, going out of your way to do things that would be considered a really nice gesture, a really nice act. And after a while, this begins to become the norm. Your partner, your spouse, that other person begins to recognize it. They see all that you're doing for them. And eventually, and most likely, they come around as well. It starts to rub off on them. Because remember, it's so much of the energy that you're putting out into the world is that you're getting back. If you're negative saying that, oh, they don't treat me right, they don't talk to me right, they don't, you know, any of these things, that's most likely more of what you're going to get. And that is what I say on an energetic base level and on an action level. So right, if we're going into multiple dimensions here or in this actual third dimension, what we are doing and what we are feeling and thinking have to come together. We have to feel what we want, not focus on the negative. We need to focus on what we do want, that outcome. But then we need to begin to work the plan. And again, so much of that is really up to us. Because we have to be the ones to allow it to happen. So I know we've talked about visualization before and the whole law of attraction and those types of things. I do believe in it. I do believe in it, right? You need to envision it. You need to feel the feeling of it already happened. But you also need to take action. And when you take action, move yourself out of the way. Just get out of the way. Allow yourself to work those steps that you have in your blueprint, your formula, your plan, your coach gave you, whatever it is. Allow yourself to simply work the plan, put it into your schedule, try to work on it on a daily basis. And I have no doubt that if you begin to work this plan, if you begin to just get out of your own way, I have a feeling that you're going to achieve your goals a whole lot faster. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Always a pleasure. And if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. 